All right, so we got a tutorial here on how to build a wheel. So we're going to do a new part file and then OK. You can also do that up here. And we'll wait for it to load. SolidWorks, the main idea is that you take a 2D picture or a 2D sketch, and then you can either extrude it or you can revolve it. Or there's a couple other more advanced ones, but um, they're all the same sort of idea of we're taking a 2D shape and then we're going to make it into 3D. So if you come over here on your left, you have your um, basically your history and all your files. So this is the front plane. We have the top plane and a right plane, and there's your origin, and there's your axes. So for this, since it's a wheel and round, we're going to do everything with a um, revolve. So we'll do a revolve, and then we've got to choose which plane we want to do it on. Since this is a single part, it doesn't really make much of a difference. Um, so I like to try and keep everything kind of front plane oriented. So in this case, we're going to start with the right plane. So you can see it rotates around. You have your origin point here. And I like to try and keep as many things in one drawing as I can, because that makes it easier to change later. So. We're going to go ahead and say that our axis right here is kind of our middle ground. So, oh wow, it's a little slow. No, I'm going to make it up because I wasn't told any dimensions. Uh, it's a motorcycle, you said? Yeah, it's a motorcycle. Okay, so I'll kind of go off of that idea. I'm going to go ahead and do a line here. And then I'm going to define this line as a center line. And what that allows me to do is I can do all my dimensions off of that center line, and it's going to automatically change those dimensions to be diameters rather than radiuses so that you don't have to mess with things. Okay, and then we're going to make it for construction. And there we go. Actually, I forgot. We need to do a center line in this case. We're going to delete that other one that I did. Wow. It's quite slow. Mm -hmm. There we go. Delete. Another thing that is within this program is you can constrain everything to other points. So I'm going to constrain this line here by just clicking on it, and this menu will change on this left side. And I'm going to constrain it to be always vertical. Horizontal is what I meant. My bad. You can see that it's not liking that because you can't have it horizontally constrained and vertically constrained at the same time. You can run SolidWorks off a of Hydra. I don't recommend it if you don't have to. So there we go. Horizontal. Then I'm going to constrain that to that center, this center point and make a coincident constraint. Okay, so now if I go up here and I do a dimension. My dimension to this line, I'll highlight blue here in a second. Hopefully. And then if I pull over here. You can see how it automatically goes down to that bottom piece. And now I have a constraint that's um, a diameter. Uh, do you want English units or metric? Because of the size that we are talking about, I think uh, uh, inches would be OK. Inches would be OK? Like All right. a, we're doing a maybe, I think we have a 17 inch wheel, don't we? That sounds right. Yeah, yeah, it's about right. So um, this program defaults to metric. So I'm going to have to exit out of that sketch. You see how it automatically tries and revol revolve it for me because I hit revolve from the start. Uh, we actually don't want to do that quite yet. And if you go right here, you can change. Oh, it is in SI units. Just, that's odd. All right. So I'm going to go back into this sketch. And now I'm going to change these dimensions. 
Which dimension? This guy? These. Move the mouse below the center. Oh, is how I got that dimension. Yeah. Exactly. Oh, that's weird to try and use it over there. Okay. So you enter the number in there. Yep. So enter 17, enter. And since it's the first dimension, it kind of automatically scales everything. And we're going to come in and we're going to dimension this top piece. I think most motorcycle wheels are about four inches wide. Okay, and you can see how it changes that dimension. So then we're, we're going to do a second box for the axle. You can see how it kind of automatically snaps things for me. Now those are guides. They are not dimensions at this point. So right now those are not, they are not, they don't have to be attached to each other. So if I, I can still move it around if I wanted. We'll make the hub a three inch hub. I'm just waiting for it to catch up. Three inch hub. And we'll make that a thickness of, we'll say, an inch. And we'll make this guy two inches just because. Okay, and now you can see that I have everything a little bit crooked. So we're going to come up and we're going to do another center line. And I'm going to go to the origin. If you start with everything kind of at the origin, then, and you constrain everything to your steps before, everything will be fully defined. So if you see down here right now it says underdefined, that means that I can still grab things and move things around. And if you leave them underdefined, later on if you do assemblies or things like that, it'll really mess you up. So I'm just going to draw this center line right straight here. Enter to get out of that. Okay, and then if you highlight right in this area, waiting for it to catch up, it should... There we go. So you see how it popped up with a node? If you click that and then I right, I hit shift, click on the line. Okay, now I have these two pieces and I can constrain them to each other. So coincidence constraint means it's just a point to a line. So you can see how it moved it over and now that is locked to be centered on that line. I'm going to do the same thing on the top one. Wait for that little guy to show up. Shift click on the line, and coincidence. So now you can see we're close to being fully defined. And now if I just kind of grab things, okay, so that is still movable. So I need to constrain that. I'm going to go ahead and go to this line. How do we do the constraint? We're going to do it right now. Okay. Just by doing a dimension, it'll constrain it. I'm going to go down below that center line so that it gives me a diameter. And we're going to call that an inch to make an inch hub. So now you can see how, see how it changed to fully defined. Now I can't grab a hold of anything and move it at all. Now we've got to do one last part of the spokes. So we're going to draw a line from here down. And then See how it automatically tries to just go off that next point? I don't want that in this case. Oftentimes you do. Just hit escape and it gets out of that. Now you can come back, 
click on that line. Wait for the program to catch up. There we go. So back into the line function and then down. So now we have two more pieces. And you can see how it changed to underdefined again because these guys don't have any constraints on them, dimensions, nothing. So now we're going to try and zoom in here. And there's a couple different ways that we can do this. We can either use lines as geometry or we can just use dimensions. So I can just brute force dimension everything to itself to make it nice and um, the, the, so the problem with doing that is then you have to change every dimension every time you want to change something. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to do a line. And then um, I want to come over here and click for construction. So I'm going to draw a line from this point over to here. And then I'm going to escape. And then I'm going to do the same thing on this other side. And then what I can do is I can take those two construction lines and I can make them equal to each other. So then all I need is one dimension for the center point here. And I can fully define that. And then if I say want to make the spoke a little bit wider, I can just change that one dimension and it won't completely screw up my whole drawing. Did I save my other line? Doesn't look like it. OK. So we got two construction lines now. Wait for it to stop spinning. Get out of the line function. Okay. So I'm going to highlight that line. I just want to select the one line. So if you drag, if you click and then drag down, it highlights only what's 100% in the box. If you click and drag up, it highlights everything that the box touches. A little useful little trick. OK, so I'm going to get that line to highlight. You can see how it changed color there. I'm going to hit Shift, and I'm going to do the same thing on this other side. Wait for it to catch up. OK, so you can see that I have those two lines highlighted down there. They're slightly light blue. Then I'm going to come and I'm going to go make sure that they're equal. You can see how it centered that piece. Then we're going to do the same thing up top for construction, here to here, enter. In this case, back into the line function. Looks like it didn't actually draw a line there. There we go. Enter. OK. Once again, highlight the two lines. I'm just waiting for it to catch up. And do the same thing here. It's 
So you see the idea we have this uh, sketch and he's going to revolve it around. Yeah. And then he's going to carve out whatever we don't want. It's being a pain. So I'm going to show you the other way up top. Uh, you can just dimension both sides. Say I want that to be one inch. And whichever is easier. Yeah. We're and I want this one to be the same one inch. And then I'm going to dimension this guy here. Say I want that to be one inch. And then we're back to being fully defined. So the construction lines are super handy. All right, so then we're going to come up and hit exit set sketch. So now we have our 2D part. We come up to revolve. We're going to choose this surface. We want to do a blind revolve all the way around. And I selected, so this axis of revolution, we don't want that to be it. We want this line to be the axis of revolution. And there you go. You see the outer part here. We also want to not just that upper piece. We want to do this bottom piece too. And then we have the two parts. We hit the green check. And we got part of a wheel. So then we need the spokes. So we're going to do a, another revolve. We're going to choose uh, this line here. Oh, actually, come up here so you can get your part history again. Drop this guy down. We're going to select that sketch. We want that surface. We're going to do a blind revolution. And we only want to do 10 degrees this time. And then choose the axis of revolution. There we go. Um, and then we're going to choose the second direction to make it so that it, it revolves out this way. Because right now all it's doing is revolving out this way. And then hit enter. So now we have one spoke. Then we're going to click this guy and we're going to do a circular pattern. And what that allows us to do, then we're going to choose our axis. If you come back to your sketch, if you click the sketch, and then should allow you to select that line. Looks like it's not going to. So we can choose a round surface as an axis. It'll pick the center of that. Then I want to, instead of doing instant spacing, I want to do an equal spacing. So then I can decide if I want a five spoke rim, then it's going to put five spokes in for me. So we wanted to go all the way around with five of them in between. Take a green check, and there you go. You have a wheel. Now it's all one piece. All one piece. Yeah. yeah. OK, wonderful. Yeah. Yeah, so now um, the next step is, see, we have the wheel here. And it's all one piece. Now we need to export this wheel in, uh, we need to save it, this wheel, in such a way that the other program can actually read it. Okay, so what I'm thinking is, uh, yeah, so we, are, we have finished the SOLIDWORKS part, we produce a wheel, and in the next step we are going to export this wheel in such a way that the other program can actually read it. Anybody have any questions?